Chris Matthews, you've uh, done this before, written, uh, written speeches for presidents. What does Joe Biden need to do tonight? Well, he's going to face the enemy. Uh, clearly, we have watched Mitch, uh, Mitch uh, McConnell and we've watched uh, Lindsey Graham and watched Cruz, as you talked about it this morning. Everybody in that audience is, is maggot is maggot up totally with MAGA. Uh, all the way, they're, they're all in. They've all agreed to endorse uh, Trump. They're going to they're going to be adamantly opposed to anything on the border. Anytime if the president takes any kind of shot at the Republicans for not supporting the deal that they originally were for at their leadership level, he's going to get attacked. It's going to be a brutal Brutal night for him, and of course everybody's going to look and see how he's doing, how he's what kind of vitality he shows. But these guys are in the tank with with Trump all the way, and they're going to show it tonight. I think it's going to be like like Adam Schiff's uh, uh, victory speech the other night in, in California. I mean, there's just going to be a lot of heckling. It's going to be very difficult for uh, the president. You know, Susan, uh, you've written that the the president needs to do five things. Tell us about those. <laughs> Well, some of them are standing up to his opponents, as, as Chris just said, but one of them is demonstrating his own vigor, uh, his mental acuity. You know, he did that last year with that exchange that you showed part of uh, just a moment ago where he, he took advantage of Republican heckling. That He turned that to his advantage uh, last year. A moment like that would serve him well tonight. Uh, he also needs to kind of reset where he is on immigration. We now see immigration outdistancing the economy as the issue that is top on voters' minds. And at the moment, Donald Trump has uh, something like a 30-point advantage in handling immigration. Uh, the president, President Biden needs to show that he has policies on immigration that will do more to secure the border. And I believe we're going to hear some of that tonight. You know, Mark, yeah, you've written about this town. Uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the, one of the key events in, in Washington, D.C., uh, in what, what, what the town does. You never really know how these things are going to go. I can tell you from my personal experience, Bill Clinton came in, and I think the first year he talked about school uniforms, we all laughed. It worked, uh, that line. Um, he said, I think the next year, the era of big government is over. We laughed uh, even harder. Uh, it connected with a lot of uh, working class and middle class voters. And um, and and then um, he he he... I'm sure you remember this right in the the, the heat, the, like sort of the, the peak of the Monica Lewinsky scandal. He went, delivered his State of the Union. Hillary Clinton got a rousing ovation. Bill Clinton got a rousing ovation uh, by Democrats. And again, every time Bill Clinton rose to the occasion, even some of I mean, some of those speeches were so long, I would leave, go into the cloakroom, sleep for 45 minutes, come out. He'd still be going. And I said, I said, this, this just can't work. But you, it's so unpredictable. That's really the last big bully pulpit. And Bill Clinton sure figured out a way to make it work for him like Joe Biden did last year. What does Joe Biden need to do this year? Well, I mean, what's interesting about the State of the Union is it's been a set piece event for Washington for a long time. And you could kind of predict uh, the laundry list. You could sort of say the president has to do A, B and C, and he's probably going to talk about A, B and C. In more recent years, it's become more chaotic and unpredictable. And it has really kind of rewarded a president who can think on uh, on his feet. And, and Biden, you know, can do that. But that sort of couples with the whole, uh, well, the president has to show vigor, which, you know, in itself becomes a part of the narrative, right? Because one, Biden hasn't said much publicly, and, and this has been looked to, and it's like he's been saving up uh, a lot of his message for tonight. And two, I mean, can he parry the unpredictable things that are going to be coming from the audience? Because as we've seen recently, the, the decorum of letting the president speak and doing, um, you know, giving him his hour is kind of lost because there, there's been more heckling recently. There have been more rogue actors in the gallery, and you never know how it's going to look. And many of those members exist to heckle, whether in this format or on Twitter or wherever else. So there's definitely going to be heckling tonight, I think, even despite the request from Speaker Johnson that there not be any outbursts. We'll see. So, Jonathan, let's talk about the objective here for the White House. This is not supposed to be a political speech. This is the annual address about the State of the Union. But it is the biggest audience that the president will have now as we've turned the corner after Super Tuesday to what clearly is a two-man race. Yeah, it will implicitly be a political speech, even if not overtly one. It's our State of the Union delivered in a re-election year. Uh, and Chris Matthews, it comes just two days after uh, Donald Trump 
all you know, locked up the GOP nominee. Just needs a few dozen delegates to go to make that official. So how would you recommend Biden deal with the elephant in the room, which is Donald Trump? Should he call him out by name? Does he go after him directly? Or does he talk more obliquely about threats to democracy and try to really create a contrast between himself and his likely November foe? You know, I, I, I wish logic would work, but uh, he could talk about what we've been showing, you've been showing this morning with Mitch McConnell. He said all the right things after January 6th. Everything about the way the police were attacked by this mob, how it was an insurrection, how there was criminality involved. And all that truth came out. Well, where'd that truth go to? If, if you could somehow bring back that truth of, of the attacks on the cops and, and the, as human beings, the, the way they were treated in, in this moment of insurrection, I think he has a moment here to teach people in their own words, really, what they believe themselves, that they were under attack, that they were running for their lives, not just Mike Pence and Nancy Pelosi, but all of them were running. You know, Mitt Romney, I mean, these guys, I wish Mitt Romney was out there speaking tonight, but they're afraid. I think he has to call them out and talk about Get them the tar some get to get the people to think, who are these people that represent us? Are they leaders or are they followers? Are they just following Trump? I, I wish he could talk to them. I, I was thinking the hardest thing about giving a State of the Union is who are you talking to, Joe? I mean, when you, when you talk on television, you sort of know who's, who your audience is, sort of, you sort of gotten to know it over years. Who is that person, that woman or man, younger and older? Who is that person you're talking to? It's not a billion people. It's not 123 million people like at the Super Bowl. It's somebody you know that's not too smart about the details, but is a smart person. Always overestimate the, the brains of your audience and underestimate the knowledge they have. So help them a little bit on the knowledge, but work the, and speak to them as if they're intelligent. We all right. know what happened on January 6th. Talk to those people as if it really happened. Remind them it happened. I wouldn't be branching off into 40 different issues in this speech. No. I remind him of what of the constant our constitution was a threat. And these people in this audience are going along with the guy who caused the threat. And I and I know it's going to be tough. He's going to have opposition out there. But he has to talk truth to the American people. If, if Biden gets reelected, it's because we remember January 6th. I really think it's that. It's not going to be gun control or something else. It's not about the border. Do we remember what these people tried to do and what they support now? Why do these people, they want their jobs so bad, they'll do anything, they'll say anything to keep their jobs. And it's just like in Profiles and Courage. They love being U.S. senators. They love it. I understand why they do. But they'll do anything to keep those jobs. And he has to somehow get that truth out. These people in the audience here, have been bought and paid for because they love their lifestyle. And and somehow talk to them. Now, I don't know whether they'll ever, afterwards will they even admit what he was talking to, but the American people need to be reminded of January 6th. You know.